Good morning everyone, it's Mike Fisher for Finding Fish. Welcome to Keo Coco. Welcome to Playa Flamenco. I think that's what it's called. In this video, I'm going to be going over some details with you that you might want to know about if you're considering to coming to Cuba. If you're a first timer, you might find this information valuable. The first thing that you're going to need to know if you're actually coming to Cuba is you're going to have to fill out a visa when you get on the plane and it's pretty straightforward. It's a form, um, there's two sides to the form. You just fill out each side. Um, basically what they'll do is they'll stamp that visa and you'll have to keep that visa in your passport until you leave and then they'll take the visa from you. That's just to let them know who was here and when you were here and if you have actually left the country. The visa, I believe it starts with your last name, goes to your first name, your date of birth, and then at the bottom you put your passport in there and then you just duplicate it to the other side. The next piece of information you're going to need to know is you're going to have to do a declaration form coming to Cuba. The best place that I've found that is on the Sunwing website. Scroll down to the right. You'll find it down there kind of like you know when you're going through like to see contacts and everything down there. Click on it. It will pop up and when it does pop up it'll be in Spanish. But if you go to the top right hand corner, you'll see a little A, click on that. That'll change it over to any language you want, I believe. I, I just put it in English. You'll need to fill out the form. It's basically the exact same form that we used to fill out when we were flying down here. They just want to go paperless. And you'll need to do that before you, before you get to the airport because if you're boarding on some aircrafts, they're gonna want to see it before you even go to the self checkout counter. That form's pretty straightforward. We've all done it before many times. If you haven't, it's not a big deal. The next thing you're gonna wanna know when you're flying down here is what you're getting into. Right now, I'm down here on low season. What does that mean? It means maybe there's just not the food selection that there typically is. We've actually had a water shortage since we've been here. And, uh, hey, good morning. Morning, morning. Uh, we've actually had a water situation while we've been here, but that's been rectified. Totally lost water for, I think, the complete day, actually, and into the night. No ice, everything, just nothing. No showers, but that did come back. And since I've been here, I haven't had a problem with my water. I actually even have hot water. The pressure's not as good as it used to be, but I think it's coming back. The Wi-Fi here in Cuba, it's sketchy. But right now, at the Memories Flamenco where I'm staying, they're starting to put Wi-Fi into the rooms right now as we speak. Putting running cables through all the buildings, so by the time I leave, there's probably going to be Wi-Fi here. For people that are coming to Cuba for first time, I think what you need to consider is why are you wanting to choose to come to Cuba? I think this is the biggest decision that someone needs to make if you're traveling to Cuba. If you're a pretty hardy person, you're going to love it here. If you're a person that needs consistency, and if you're a person that's been to other resorts in the Caribbean and you enjoy a specific place like Dominican, Mexico, whatever, uh, you, know, you know, I've said it in lots of my videos, you're not going to get that here. You're not getting tons of Caesar salads or filet mignons all the time. Maybe at some resorts you will, but right now, eh, I haven't seen that in a while. Not to say you can't get it here, but I think when you're considering coming to Cuba, you really want to maybe consider why you're coming to Cuba. Like my consideration, it's the beach. It's my favorite thing to do. I love a cappuccino, I love a beach, and I love hard boiled eggs. So for me, I'm happy with that. Got a couple of horses going by there. I'll write the pros and cons down. Hey, why do I want to go there? What am I going to get out of it? For me, it's easy. I want a beach. I want to be unbothered. Look who's behind me. I got two horses. No one's bugging me. One of the nicest beaches. So for me, that box is ticked. A great cappuccino, that box is ticked. I get lots of water. You know, a uh, bottle of water every day in my room. If I don't, if I drink all that, I go down to reception or I go somewhere, one of the bars, they load me up. 
That box is ticked. They get my hard boiled eggs. I'm happy with that. But typically you can get like shrimps and stuff like that. Typically. But I'm in low season right now, so that might not be happening all the time. So you might want to consider like, before you're coming, consider why you'd want to come. If you can answer that question, and it doesn't start with food, then you might be okay. Not to say that all food in Cuba is bad, not at all. Sometimes in low season, I find that the food quality here in Cuba sometimes could go down, it could be. I'm staying at the Memories Flamenco right now. Jorge has left, and I've noticed that the food quality has gone down a bit since last time I was here. Then again, I heard that the food buffet the, the day before I got here was, it was good, it was really good. The food here in Cuba is gonna be repetitive at buffets. That's gonna be 100% guaranteed. But different resorts have different offerings. Jenny and I have been all over Cuba this summer and we had great food in Cayo Largo. Like, it was awesome. It depends on where you go and how much you pay. Sometimes, sometimes we'll dictate your quality of food. But I can always find something really healthy to eat here and actually appetizing. It can be bland and it can be repetitive. Safety. I find Cuba is a pretty safe place to be. For me, I'm a male. I'm talking from my point of view now. My wife and I can walk off the resort and go into town or go into Veradero and we feel totally safe. Now, am I out late at night? No, I'm not. And I'm not telling people to go do it. And you know, I'm just telling you my point of view, like I feel safe when I go. But then again, I don't wear jewelry anymore. Um, when I travel, I don't, uh, I don't have anything on anymore. Don't wear my watches. I just, I just keep low key, you know? And uh, it seems to serve me well energy shortages here in Cuba and water shortages and electricity shortages. That's gonna be typical here in Cuba, but I'm in the Caribbean and when you can go to islands, sometimes there's, that's an island problem as well. It's just not a Cuba problem. Like energy problems all over the Caribbean is happening. We lost power for an hour or two. That's about it. If you're coming here and you love to walk on a beach, well, beach walking here is one of my favorite hobbies. You can walk for miles here and uh, sometimes there won't be anybody on the beach. So if you're into beach walking, you're gonna have a fantastic time. If you're looking to take a taxi or you wanna get transportation to and from in Cuba, things have gone up in the last two or three years. The price for fuel has gone up, so now taxis have gone up and I think last time I was pricing a taxi somewhere, it was like $80, $90, or I wanted to go to Milan for something. It was just, it was kind of crazy. Hop on, hop off bus is still $5, which is a great value for money. To get around this place, it's fantastic. Speaking of inflation, cigars here have gone through the roof, just so you know. I can't believe how much a cigar is nowadays. The best places that I've always find to buy cigars is at the airports when I leave. Best place to find uh, all my cigars. Everything I need, I, I kind of get at the airport. If you're going to the airport, and don't go hungry because things are expensive there and I don't know how fresh some of the stuff is when you go to the airport. That's, that's something to consider. Grab some food before you go or even pack a little lunch to take to the airport because it's a three hour wait. And there's not a lot there. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. All the airports we go to, there's nothing at the airports to really eat. Unless you really want an overpriced ham and cheese sandwich. A couple other things. Bug spray. Make sure you bring lots of bug spray and sunscreen. Always a must because it's expensive down here. You can't buy bug spray, but you can sometimes get sunscreen. And also tipping. I bring $5 and $10 bills and uh, American dollar bills and just regular Canadian currency. I do exchange it for loonies and toonies that all the Cuban workers have. I gave them paper money, they give me loonies and toonies and we just keep transferring back and forth. Right? I just take them home and use them at home because their banks will not take coins but they will take paper money and they love Canadian money folks. It is kind of one of my favorite countries to come to. I don't know why. I think it's because of the beaches, the water, uh, the warmth, the friendliness of people here. I mean, the friendliness of Canadians that travel down here too. That means a lot, you know, when my son got sick, 
And guess what? I had uh, so many people. Whatever you need, no problem. And that's just not because of me and I'm well known here. It's because of that's how Canadians are. Hey, Stacy, thank you, giving those hydrator packs that really helped out. There's just a lot of great people here that you traveled to Cuba from Canada. And like from all over Canada, I'm talking all over the place. I meet people from PEI, John. I meet people from Newfoundland, Cape Britain, Jim and Robin. Like there's fantastic people that come here. And that's one great thing. If something happens, someone will always help you out with something. Anyway, this video is not to be a negative Nelly at all. I, I actually really enjoy this country and I enjoy the ups and downs and the ebbs and flow that Cuba has to offer. For me, it's an adventure and that's kind of like my life. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing next week. I'm going somewhere, but uh, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it how raw it is and you, you don't get to come to places like this too often in the world. It's everything's overrun with, you know, companies and all those coffee places and all those restaurants that make really bad food you know you know what I'm talking about all the the big chain stores when you come here there's no chains there's no chains okay a few final thoughts health care uh, my young lad had to have a nurse come to the room that's fifty dollars US just for the consultation he couldn't keep anything down, so uh, we brought a few things, like gravel, but he couldn't keep it down, so we finally had to get the shot. It's gonna be a lot cheaper than going to the hospital, which I've been to before, and trust me, yeah, that's a tough experience. I would always have a little travel kit of Band-Aids, gravel, Imodium, Tylenols, Advils, anything else you probably might need make sure you bring it because that'll save you a bunch anyway the, the the cost for the nurse and everything was 90 us paid in cash or visa the final thought is you know when you're traveling down here travel with empathy you know the people that work at these resorts work hard and uh you know when you don't have power in the cities that they're coming from sometimes they don't have power either so they were gonna they're gonna come from places without air conditioning maybe just a fan and if they haven't had power the fridge hasn't been on so just remember that be kind to people is the most important thing down here to the workers and to other people just be kind it goes a long way it, it can help you out help you out with the uh, mini binds i think i'm heading to veradero next if anyone has a veradero idea of where i should go let me know in the comments below i'll see you in the next video